Here to talk to us about his fourth book titled The Language of Zen, Heart Speaking to Heart is Haverty Grace resident and author, Dr. Richard Burnett Carter. Good to see you. Thank you. Well, I have to say, Dr. Carter, you have a very impressive pedigree. And I think our viewers would enjoy hearing a little bit how you arrived where you are today, what your background is. Well, I went to Baltimore City High Schools and barely passed. Okay. And then I went to St. John's in Annapolis and had a glorious four years. And read lots of great books, I guess, right? All of them. Yes. <laughs> All of a hundred of them. And then I went to Korea, I ended up in a hospital for a month, mm. and then got a month's convalescent leave where I traveled in Japan and really began to, to get a touch of what I ended up there. Okay. And then what happened after that? And I went back and got my PhD in philosophy from Columbia. And my dissertation was on Descartes, who is a young man and more or less invented what we know today as analytic geometry. But then he laid the groundwork for modern mechanistic medicine. And my book uh, on that, my dissertation, was how he got from one thing to the other. Wow. And that's where I started, and then I started teaching. Sounds like rather heady stuff, I have to that's tell you. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, then you went from all of that to becoming an ordained Zen layman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because uh, now I, I was born and raised uh, uh, an Episcopalian, and uh, I loved my church, I loved its music and all that, and I'm a bit of a scholar of that stuff, but something in me, it just didn't touch. Mm -hmm. Many of my dearest friends, it did, and it didn't me. And so uh, I began to sniff around and uh, came across uh, the, uh, some of the, the books uh, written about Zen, and they interested me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, so t for those of us who don't know that much about Zen, but it's a word you hear all the time. Yeah, that's right. Tell me if you can, in a, just a couple of okay. seconds, give us a definition. Yeah, uh, Zen, first of all, is not a religion. It's a practice. And the practice is, if you'll hold the heart up, okay. that's called Shin. It's the, je the, the kanji for heart. But it doesn't mean what we mean by heart. It means a heart which cares. And so... Is it the caring, heart without caring, you get weapons of mass destruction. Oh. And heart feeling without mind, you get beach, beach novels. Okay. <laughs> and a 50% divorce rate. Oh, okay. Now, what, <laughs> what Zen does and has done for me is put those two together. And so the heart's ardor is... Uh, guided by the architecture of the mind. Oh, interesting. All right. So you have become quite an expert on this, so much so that you've written books about it. And you have a lovely book here. It's your fourth book that's called The Language of Zen, Heart Speaking to Heart. Tell us about this book. Well, um, I realized I, I, I'm multilingual. I know three or four languages. And uh, so I know something about translation, that the, the, uh, many of the translations Either the translations were off or the people they were translating were idiots. And uh, I doubted the second, so I wondered about the first. And uh, I wrote to the president of this Hana Uni Hanazono University. It's the only Zen university in the world in Kyoto. Okay. And he kindly invited me as a research scholar for a year there. And uh, I was right. Uh, the, we in the West, and this is where my philosophy of science comes so important, we naturalize all the terms which come in like compassion, uh, all that reason, right. and we turn it into Western meaning. Well, they don't mean that at all. Oh. And so my un very unusual background to have my kind of solid Western philosophy, right. but also to have a, sort of, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a born zenny. Uh, <laughs> well, I am, some are, some are. You come aren't. to it naturally. I come, yeah, I come to it naturally. I took to it like a duck to water. And, uh, so uh, that's, this book is really my labor of love to thank all the people who were so generous in helping me uh, while I was in Kyoto. Right. Well, I'm holding the book up here, and it is, I have to tell you, I've not had a chance to read it yet, but it is a beautiful book. And I'm just going to open up just one of the pages here, and you can see. I mean, the, it's a gorgeous book, Dr. Carter. I'm very impressed. I'm very, very fortunate. The, uh, the uh, Sterling Company that did it... Uh, was uh, so impressed by it that they got an outside designer. 
Ah. And this is a brilliant job, brilliant job. Well, it is beautiful. We're going to put up, I think people are going to want to talk to you about this more and about your book. I know you had a book signing earlier in Hartford County earlier this season. Yeah. You're going to be having one in Annapolis in the future. So, But if people want to get in touch with you, there is your email address, a very interesting email address. We okay. have 10 seconds. Can you explain that? Epu Koji. Epu was my name my, uh, my Zen master gave me, and it means pinnacle of joy. Right. Uh, as I say, I was born bubbling. And uh, Koji means that I'm an ordained Zen layman, okay. which means I'm a you know, stamp of seal of approval uh, <laughs> with no shelf date. <laughs> okay. Well, it's been fascinating. I wish we had more time to sit and talk with you about this. But thank you so much, and My best wishes to you, Dr. Richard Burnett Carter. Thank you. Thank you.